Well, first of all, thank everybody for showing up. We appreciate you being here on a cold, rainy evening. Um, tonight, we're, we're going to start the evening with our annual AEIS public hearing for the Conroe Independent School District. Uh, Dr. Chris Hines, our Deputy Superintendent, is here to present information. And at the conclusion, if you have any comments, we'd ask that you come to the podium and state your name. And if you keep your comments to two minutes, uh, we'd appreciate it. At this time, I'll turn it over to Dr. Hines. Thank you. Uh, good evening. This is kind of an interesting year for doing the annual report. Um, each year we receive the uh, Academic <coughs> Excellence Indicator Report System. Um, it is our state's accountability system, and each year they send us a report, and, and we received this uh, about six or eight weeks ago. And each year we, we come out and share an overview of what's in the report. And that report is posted on our website, as is a the summary of what we call our um, annual performance report, which is kind of a summary of the Academic Excellence Indicator System report. It's usually a really long document, it's like 30-something pages. This year, it's about half the size because the academic reporting section is much smaller because they haven't reported the uh, results for the STAR 3 through 8. And we, did, we will receive those results, we think, either later this week or early next week. We haven't actually received those results yet, but those are coming. Uh, there is a new state accountability system that's being developed in uh, 2013. Uh, there were no ratings that were issued for the 11-12 school year, and that's what this report covers. It covers last year's uh, information. <clears throat> and we, will, we are expected that the state will release in May of this spring um, the new accountability system and, and the ratings uh, will be uh, released in August. So I believe in first year the ratings will either be acceptable or unacceptable. The uh, passing standards for the last spring's State of Texas Assessments of Academic Readiness or the STAR are expected, as I mentioned, next week. There is a new framework for the new accountability system. And it will include, we, we believe it's going to include four major components or parts of the framework, one being student achievement on the STAR and in the course assessments, <coughs> also student progress on the STAR to advanced performance and satisfactory performance, which we call level two or level three. Uh, there will also be a, a, a part that weighs in on whether or not districts are closing achievement gaps as measured by the STAR performance for economically disadvantaged students, and two of the lowest performing racial or ethnicity student groups. There also will be a post-secondary readiness as measured by uh, STAR advanced performance, graduation rates, and then types of diploma. So we know these are going to be features in the new accountability system that we'll release later this year. So this year, uh, we don't have the traditional heavy data report to have all the trends or comparisons certainly don't even have results this year. So we'll just hit the highlights, and some of you are probably glad this is kind of a shorter report than, than normal, and um, try to hit the highlights of what's in the API. We'll start with enrollment. One of the things that's in the report is uh, our, how we performed as a school district. Our current enrollment uh, for the ending of 2012 was 52,600. 77 students, and you can see how uh, Conroe Independent School District has had steady growth for the last few years. We're at 2003, we were at just under 38,000 students, having pretty fast growth. What is the membership of our district? Currently, we are 6% African American, 32.9% Hispanic, 4.6% White, 0.5% American Indian, 3.1% Asian, 0.1% Pacific Islander. 2.7% two or more races, and that was uh, the categories were changed up about four years ago. This year we did get results back in grades 10 and 11. This, this is the last year for uh, 11th grade. The 11th grade will be the last group to take the tax this year, but this, this year we did receive results for 10th and 11th grade uh, tax results. The interesting part was that in the past we've never been, never received the report as just 10th and 11th grade only, so we couldn't go back and just do a comparison. So uh, 
uh, we didn't even really have that to compare, but we could at least compare ourselves with the district and how we performed. This is the sum of the um, grade the grade level test. So we had 95% pass compared to the state, 92% in English language arts, 87% pass math compared to 82% at the state level, 90% pass science uh, compared to 84%. 98% past social studies compared to 96%. That's how we did it in 11th grade. For the cumulative passing rate for graduates, class of 2012, 96% of our students uh, did pass tax exit level compared to the state level of 93%. And we were constant from the year prior. Now, I know you're wondering what happens to the 4%. and uh, it could be a variety of things. There could be in that group students who still graduate under an IEP, might still graduate, they just didn't pass. The student may continue to come to school or take classes. We offer some classes for students who haven't passed yet. Um, we could have uh, students who don't finish or opt to go take the TE. There are a certain percentage of students who don't make it through pass all, in the, all the exams by the time uh, the cohort finishes. Cohorts are groups that start as ninth grade, finish four years later, or should finish four years later. So that's how we track our students in terms of who graduates. And um, the state has four categories that we keep up with for high school completion. Uh, graduates, those students who earn a GED, those who re-enroll for another year of high school, those that drop out. And those, those numbers go together to make completion rate one and two. The difference between completion rate one and two is that in completion rate two, they'll include as not dropping out as a completer. So when we look at our completion rate, um, you can see we did, uh, we did better than the state with 94.2% of our students in 2011. And this is always a year old data because they have to be, see how we did. 94.2% graduated, 1.2% received the GED, 2.9% continued, and 1.7% dropped out. So the continued put together with graduates, it's completion rate one, and our completion rate, which was significantly better than the state, and completion rate two at 98.3%, which included the GED. And this is testimony to the hard work of all of our teachers from pre K up to high school, 12th grade, and hard work. So these are the four categories. We do have two years of data to look at. Uh, and we're really excited about that first quadrant where 94.2% uh, graduated in 2011. That was up over 92.5% um, in 2010. That, that's a hard number to move, running a, a pretty high percentage of graduates. Uh, and the difference came from the group below, the continued. We actually were able to reduce those students, get them. So that's what we're proud of. And, and now the state tracks a fifth. That data is also going to be start to show up. We had 1.7, 10, and 11 drop out. <laughs> Something else that is in our report is the percentage of students that, that graduate, high graduation plan do they graduate under? This chart just represents the trends. The uh, green <coughs> section is, are, the, are the percentage of students that graduate under the minimum program. The red represents the recommended plan. And the blue recommends, uh, represents the distinguished achievement program. And what we're excited about over time is our trend on the red bar uh, and the blue bar has gotten bigger and we have a smaller percentage of our students are graduating under you know there's a strong relationship between um, which plans they graduate and the rigor of the courses. Another one of the college readiness indicators that's in the AEIS is the uh, AP are the AP results. And again, this has been a positive thing. One of the things that we really encourage and we've tried to do in all of our college readiness indicators is increase the number of students that are participating. So continue to go up. From 10 to 11, 34.2% of our students took an AP test uh, compared to 24% at the state level. Of that group, 68% uh, of the testers met or equaled the criterion. 
compared to the state, 49.3%. So we're still outperforming the state, even though we're increasing the number of students taking the test. And, this, and we also had 61.8% of all the tests taken were at or above the criteria. That was down a little bit, but again, we increased the number of tests, test takers. So that's, that, that's a trade-off that I like that trade-off personally. This is what it looks like in terms of the trend. Yeah, uh, 6,525 of our uh, tests were taken by 3,004 students. <coughs> you see over the last 10 years that that's significant growth in terms of tests and the number of students, much faster than the actual student. One of the things we've learned is that students that take rigorous courses then sit for the <coughs> exams are better prepared when they go to college. If they don't do well on that exam, we know they're better off having experience because they now know what to expect. So um, there's a lot of good news in that trend. The other part of the college readiness indicators includes the college entrance exams. In this case, do we have the SAT or the ACT. And again, there's some, there's some good news, bad news in our results. But in 2011, we tested an all-time high for our uh, senior, our Graduated class, 79.2% were tested. And of that group, we had 45.2% of the scores were at or above the criterion. That was even up a little bit. Our average SAT score was at 1069. Our average ACT score was at 2307. It actually went up even though we increased testers. We're continuing to see increased testing, which is great. We anticipate with that, usually our scores drop a little bit. We hope to bring them back. And so, uh, this is how we looked at uh, in terms of uh, SAT performance compared to national and Texas. Nation's in blue, and Texas is in red, and Conroe's in green. For critical reading, our uh, our average was 512 compared to 496 at the national level and 470 in Texas. Math, 539 compared to 499 at Texas and 514 at the national level. In writing, the national is 488 was the average. 461 in Texas, 98. Uh, so, uh, again, we've outperformed the state and the national level and increasing percentage of kids taking tests. So, what a part of that. Another part of the AEIS report is financial data. It, it presents information about uh, what we're spending and uh, how we're using those funds. And this is, a, I thought this was an interesting trend. I included this in this summary tonight that. This shows over the last nine years um, the trend of where we were at that point when 50.7% of Conroe's operating budget in 2004 was spent directly on instruction compared to the state 51.8%. Fast forward a few years, you can see that we're the, we're the green line We switch places with the state and we have increased that to 61.4% of the budget going towards instruction compared to That's really a neat trend line that shows uh, trying to move resources to the power. Just a couple other trends that are in the financial information. One is the uh, percentage of our budget that's spent on central administration. And you can see in 2012, State average was 3.1 percent. Conroe at 1.6 percent. And Mr. Cox does a financial uh, report every year. And one of the things that he shared earlier in this year was where we were placed on the ERG uh, report. And that is the report that looks at a relationship between uh, expenditures and performance academically in places, districts, and and the place to be is in the 1-1 one, one box, and that's where we were for the uh, 2011 data. Another part of the AEIS report provides some information about uh, staffing and, and how we are staffed and how we compare. This is just an interesting trend. And again, this is information that's collected in the public education information management system. That's we use to collect the data to provide it. I always remind folks that that's sometimes a moving target. They might change 
parameters from one year to the next, or change the way things are defined. Uh, so sometimes you can have a, a, a glitch in a year. Uh, this represents the trend of the, our, our percentage or the makeup of our staff. You can see uh, we, we did decline in the 11-12 school year after steady increase, which very much mirrors our student growth. But that was the year we had the budget reduction. Everybody's very clear with that. Um, had expenditures this biennium, and so we actually saw a decline in 2012, but we kept adding back, and I'm sure we're back past 2000. Same thing with professional support. Uh, what was interesting, I was looking back at the professional support in 2010 and 2011 were also years that we had ARA money, the federal stimulus. So there was a period of two years we had added spending only to come back against uh, an earlier fiscal cliff of experience in 2012. So we did see a significant drop out, a drop off. Professional support staff includes instructional coaches, nurses, librarians, <clears throat> non teaching Number of campus administrators. Uh, this has remained fairly steady. We continue to grow, and uh, that is an area that, as we open more campuses in the next few years, that we'll see grow again. It's remained fairly steady the last few years. Central administration did have a drop off. Like the teachers in the central administration, we were able to reduce without having to lay anyone off. We were able to absorb through attrition and environment. Teacher turnover rate, this is something else that's in the AEIS report. This provides some data about what percentage of our teachers return next year to teach. And this would basically, if teaching in the system one year and doesn't come back and count it as turning. So it could be if you change jobs, change districts, retire, uh, take some time off, show up show up as a turnover. Um, so you can see we had uh, significantly less turnover in the 11-12 year, which was the year of budget reduction. So you can imagine there, there were less jobs for people to leave for. Um, two years prior to that actually were years that we participated in the date grant. I'm sure, I see a lot of principals in our audience, some of the principals participated in that. And, and there, there's some evidence that we had some reduced uh, turnover during those two years. Just as a quick overview of what we, our average expenditure per student, this is based on operating budget. And uh, that that year, we or last year, 11-12, on our own independent school district, uh, spent $6,398 per student. And this is how we compared with other districts. In the it's always kind of nice to see how do we do. Uh, and going back to that ERG uh, slide, the, the intent is, the idea is to spend as much of that money make a difference on instruction as possible. Pair favorably there. And then uh, also in the AEIS report is just some tax information about what, what rate do we tax at. Uh, in for 11, 12, uh, we taxed at $1.29 and a half cents. And you can see that in the uh, combined of both the operating and the debt service, you can see how we compared to other peer districts in the area had the lowest tax rate. Something I'm excited about. That is basically the highlights of what's in the FBIS report. If anyone would like the report, I have to make a comment. It's also available on our website, as is the uh, annual performance report, which is a summary of the uh, FBIS report. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Okay, at this time, if anybody has a comment, please come to the podium and state your name and make your comments. Anybody? Well, I hope that you're all very proud of that report. That is, that is a very impressive report, and it's because of all of your hard work, support, and the great work of our teachers in our classroom. 
classrooms across the district that we are able to show that type of information and, and obviously the support of the board. So at that time, uh, this time it completes our public hearing. Thank you. All right, I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Time is now 625. If you would, please stand with me as Scott Kidd leads our invocation, followed by Jessica Powell and our Pledges of Allegiance. If you'll join me in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we just thank you for your grace. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the blessings you've bestowed upon this country, this state, this community, and this school district. Lord, I specifically thank you for everyone in this room, their concern and their heart for kids. And we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity and the privilege it is to serve your children. Your Father, this time of year with the new semester and new challenges, Lord, we just specifically lift up and pray for our teachers, our staff members, our workers, our principals, counselors, officers, and leadership, Lord, everyone associated with our children. We just pray for them, Lord, and we especially pray for our students, that you will be with them and put a blanket of protection around them, Lord. Dear God, tonight in our decision-making, we pray for focus, we pray for wisdom, and we pray for discernment. Dear God, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state under God, one indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Ms. Powell. We appreciate your participation tonight. Item number 2A, Dr. Stock. Item 2A is uh, special uh, district recognition. It's uh, School Board Appreciation Month in the state of Texas, and we have uh, someone who's going to represent uh, the uh, Principals across the district, and uh, Mr. Fuller, I ask you to come up to the to the podium and um, share your thoughts with the board. President Sanders, board members, Dr. Stockton, it's an honor to stand here in front of y'all today. Not to, uh, on behalf of the spokesperson of my fellow administrators, teachers, students, other staff members, say thank you for all that you do. I know on a daily basis y'all make a lot of decisions that are important to us as a district and especially for our students. As you can see behind you, you see all of these, a lot of candy, cards, gifts, <laughs> uh, posters that are saying thank you for all that you do. Everything that you do, the decisions you make are um, show excellence for us, Conroe Independent School District. We're a great district and it starts with leadership as yourself. Um, I want to say thank you for that. And uh, as if I could, if I could have everybody join me in a round of applause for you and all that you do for it. Again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much as well. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. All right, item 2B citizen participation. Do we have anyone that is registered tonight? Yes, Kim Jackson and Debbie Burns. All right, the next 30 minutes on the agenda this evening has been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please keep in mind that this portion of the meeting is not the appropriate means for bringing complaints for which resolution is sought. Complaints must be addressed by following the appropriate policies and administrative procedures before they can be substituted, submitted to the Board of Trustees as an agenda item. Those who have registered to address the Board will be limited to no more than five minutes for the presentation. Delegations of more than five persons must appoint one representative to present their views to the Board. 
Also keep in mind that the board cannot deliberate or make a decision regarding any subject that is not posted on the agenda, but it can furnish specific factual information or cite existing policy in response to the inquiries. My name is Kimberly Jackson. I'm the Vice President of Texas State Teachers Association Conroe Local, and this is Debbie Burns, one of our very loyal members. And we really just want to echo everything Mr. Fuller said. And on behalf of our membership, just deeply thank you. We understand that you have lives outside of this room and jobs and children and families, and we appreciate everything you do for us. And if you, if it's okay with you, we would like to come give you some little gifts. <laughs> we can't make a decision on this. <laughs> Thank you Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 All right, I'm going to take item 5A and move it up to the top. So the next item on the agenda will be item 5A, 2011-2012 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. I'll ask Mr. Cox to come to the podium, please. <clears throat> President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, the Board of Trustees has received a final draft of the 2011-2012 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. A draft of the report was presented to the Audit Committee uh, on Tuesday, January 8th for their review and comments. Following the review, the Audit Committee voted unanimously to, to recommend approval of the CAFR. I'd like to call at this time Kevin Sanford, partner with Weaver and Tidwell, to stand and make a few comments. <laughs> Good evening, uh, board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, my name is Kevin Sanford. I'm a partner with the firm of Weaver and Tidwell and am the partner in charge of the audit of the district. And our audit is complete. We have issued our final opinion as of the, the date of the audit committee meeting, which that was complete last week. And the uh, audit report again this year was an unqualified opinion, which is the highest level of assurance that auditors can provide to a set of financials. The statements are materially, ac materially accurate for the year ended August 21st, 2012. And also, we had no findings of note uh, in deficiencies in internal controls or uh, violations of spending of federal reports. So it was in every way, shape, and form it could be a clean audit. So I'm happy to uh, address any questions if you have any on the audit report at this time. My understanding it was an unqualified opinion, meaning there were no issues whatsoever. That is correct. Uh, uh, the highest level of assurance that says that the uh, financial statements prepared by management were materially accurate. One thing. Of course. You had, you had shared something with the audit committee the other day about, frankly, the awesome staff we have. And I'd appreciate you sharing that with this board. Absolutely. And, and I just, um, I, I've heard it, but I want everybody to You bet. Absolutely. Before you make that comment, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Cousins. Right. That's picking up somebody's phone. Um, so if. if there could be a laptop. My phone's, phone's off. off. There be a laptop yeah. wireless. Yes. Anyone's got a phone? Let me remember to turn the light off. off. <laughs> I turned mine off. I missed it. Along with my iPad. Thank you. A little distracting. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry for the interruption. Anyway, I'd appreciate you sharing those sure. comments for, about our wonderful staff. Uh, staff. I'm happy to do so. Um, you know, uh, my firm, Weaver and Tidwell, is a, is a large firm in Texas. We have about 500 employees and offices in seven cities. So we do quite a few school districts, about 25 or so across the state, and all in the realm of comparable size, scope, and, and operations to the district. You know, uh, ISDs with uh, students of about eight or 9,000 up to over 100,000 student districts. So very, very similar in scope. And uh, Conroe is, is just a model um, among the, you know, the effective, uh, efficient governance from the board to the relationship with the superintendent to the relationship all the way down to the, to the lowest level clerk that we deal with in our audit. Uh, everybody, everybody buys into the same 
message. It's evident we get full cooperation, support, and unlimited access to, to anybody and everybody we deem need to talk to. And uh, the, the message from everybody at the district is just one of education first in an effective and efficient manner. You know, some of the slides that were in that AEIS report were, were clearly uh, demonstrating that that uh, that message throughout the entire operations of the district. Second your motion. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the report. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by raising your hand. Right. All opposed? Passed. Thank right. you, sir. Kevin, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, we'll go back to item 3A. Move the approval. Yep. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is that three? just for 3A of the whole oh, I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. the entire 3A mm -hmm. through F. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor, raise your hand. <clears throat> All opposed? Motion carries. Item 4A, bond referendum update. Mr. Burns, if you'll come and update the board on bond referendum progress. Mr. Sanders, our staff member of the board. Uh, this past month has been a little slow on outside activity due to the weather, but I assure you our project is still on schedule. We do build a certain amount of time into our schedules for the winter and some in the summer for the bad weather for hurricanes. So anyway, get started on uh, Pete Junior High. Our masonry uh, has been a little slow this month, as I said before, but a lot of missions have already been completed. First, and their scaffolding is going up on various of uh, the next staging, like this area here. Um, chillers, a uh, uh, portion of the chillers have already been set, the cooling towers. In fact, pretty grass hydromotor. Nice. The masonry on the inside of the building. Just looking down from that, looking down to the uh, stage below. This is some of the tile patterns, of some of the restrooms. Wow. Uh, as you can see, some of the uh, secondary quarters, we've already started the, um, the light ceiling grids and a primer on the walls. As Niner Elementary, about the same as the uh, junior high masonry continues be the desirable effort at this time. There's been quite a bit of a masonry already completed on this project so far. We're scaffolded up and ready to go as soon as the weather breaks. Gymnasium. This is the library. There again, uh, patterns of tile uh, in that particular school. Mechanical system, uh, main mechanical room is uh, almost complete. That's uh, where we are on most of the projects at this time. We, sh we are still on schedule for our schedule openings this summer. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right, item 5B, cost estimate for road on 190-acre Conroe site. Thank you. This item we were asked to bring back to the board meeting with, with some uh, information pertaining to the cost. I'll ask Mr. Cox to come and present this item. Uh, yes, uh, what you have on the screen here is the, uh, the site plan for the 190-acre site that we own between Loop 336 and 3083. Uh, this site currently contains uh, Bosman Intermediate on it as and the police station. Uh, we are about to begin construction of uh, the New Flex Elementary School adjacent to Bosman. And the question at hand here is we have currently paved a portion of the site of the road on the uh, north west uh, side of the site, which will run from 3083 to 336. And the question that we're addressing here is of what, if any, portion of that road should we project? And you can see that the ultimate master plan contemplates uh, in the future, uh, a junior high and a, and a high school also being located on the site. Our current demographics uh, project that uh, either of these schools would be required prior to 2019, uh, uh, but they, they are in the long plan. Uh, 
We also have, uh, in addition to those two other schools and the police station, we have some rather significant infrastructure on the site. Uh, we acquired this site from the adjacent property owner to the, uh, the northwest there. And as part of our contract, we have an obligation at such time as he requests in the development of his property to add a 300-foot uh, access road from 336. Uh, in other words, pay 300 feet of this uh, site, this road that's on the site plan. So we have that contractual obligation. At this time, we have no indication uh, of the need for that road at this time. But that could happen. That could change time. Uh, so we've we've looked at three options, one doing nothing, uh, which I will add that in this project, we are going to go ahead and put the curb cut on 336 if we do nothing, which would lock in that, that access and point to the site. Uh, but that's all that's currently in the plan. Uh, the other options would be to go ahead and pave the 300 feet that we may be required to pave at any point. Or to go ahead and pave the entire road. Uh, and so those are the options we have to look at. Uh, uh, we don't believe there is any, but all three options uh, have. Since I kind of led this, and let, let me just give what my opinion is one last time, and then and then I, I'll, I'll go with the pleasure of the board. I, it's not something that's falling you short about. I just simply believe that here we have a commitment to build this road eventually. We have a need for the road eventually. Uh, much like the awesome amount of underground utilities that we put into this track so that it was a one-time, not call the crew back out type situation, uh, we have lowered the amount of money that we've spent on the flex school this time because some of the underground was already done. And everybody knows equipment move in, and Hiring a contractor and the bid process and all this stuff can be can be condensed when you combine projects. Last but not least, in my lifetime, I've never seen things. You know, economically, they have been extremely cheap recently as far as construction. We've seen this in seventy, eighty million dollar um, less spending in our bond package than we expected off of our estimates in 2008. But just like interest rates, the next big move's got to be up, and we've already started to see those moves in some areas of construction and, and uh, uh, materials. Last but not least, with the oncoming building of the Grand Parkway, it is my understanding from my profession and other people that I deal with that the availability and the cost of concrete over the next you know period of time as we, as, we, as they get into building I think the first section is 33 miles that they promised Exxon and uh, that's a billion dollar contract one billion dollars for the first 33 miles of the Grand Parkway it is going to eat up concrete like uh, uh, you know like uh, Hard, hard to get. In other words, it's going to be hard to get a truck out to to pour your your uh, to make your pour. Let me put it that way. So I believe that it's not going to get any cheaper to build this road. I absolutely understand that we don't have to have the road right now, but I do understand that eventually we're going to have to have it and we're going to have to build it, and it's not going to get any cheaper than it can be done right now. So that's my feeling on why we ought to build it now, and it's in the bond package. It's a part of the agreement that we made, and any more, just as much so as we put underground boxes that you could drive trucks through all the way through this property. Got to get that piece out of the way now. So that's my motion. I, I had a question. What, what's the concern or a disadvantage to going ahead building the road now? Well, like, like we said, that we actually had planned when we started planning for this project, the second school. We had we initially planned to put the entire road in. I felt it was better to put the entire road in than to put a 300, uh, which I thought was a question. Uh, but then we saw the cost, and then we then we said, well, golly, we really. Then I, I called the landowner, and he said, well, I really don't. We don't really need it. Right. 
So we, we put, a, put it on the side. So there is no right answer. Said. That, it, it was in our initial plans. We got pricing on it. We already had the pricing. Uh, so, so it, it was like I said, it was in our initial plans, but then we just backed off immediately. Chicago was the cost. Well, the, the cost is right here. One, it's on it. One million to build the road is one million fifty six one fifty one. Uh, carrying cost of about thirty five thousand. And when do you anticipate actually using a road a year? Well, if we put the road in, it'll get used. But uh, but in terms of actually needing it to access our 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 future facilities uh, uh, is this like I said, 2009. We'll be using it in the interim. Well, we'll use it, and uh, I mean, I'm sure that we'll have some use. It will facilitate. Some access. Uh, so, they, if it were and, and of course, we, you know, we always, we also have the. Uh, well, let me, let me, let me go. Go ahead. No, you please. Go. I was going to ask, uh, have you factored in Exxon and all that? How well, when you gave us the 2019 date, was that based on? What's that based on? Well, that's based on the demographic study that we just okay. contracted. Okay. To okay. Do. And that, I don't have any better information okay. than that. So our carrying cost will be about two hundred ten thousand dollars between now and then. We're actually going to use the road, right? Uh, assuming about yeah. six years. Assuming six years. <laughs> and the remainder. Sorry, right. I'm having a tough time with speculation of the cost increase in 2019. I prefer to not expend those those funds unless we had to. I understand, Doctor. I'm sorry, Your husband's argument. Two hundred ten thousand dollars in carrying costs for roads we don't necessarily need now. Or digest. It could become a public road. Is it? It would be a should somebody mm -hmm. donate it to the city. We we could. Can can we we could we could mm -hmm. dedicate it to the city at any time. Uh, I mean, assuming they would take it. Right. That's what usually happens. Uh, we we. You know, so in that case, we would not. Uh, I'm sure the city. Would be so our agreement originally was to build 300 feet of the road. The idea being that the developer would come back in and fund the rest well, of the road. As part of the agreement to sell us the property, the developer that was one of the requirements he put in selling the property to us was he wanted he anticipated that he might develop this property before we would. Uh, we would put a school on it, so we had to agree to put in 300 feet so that he could have access to the six. Uh, as it turns out, his development hasn't moved as fast as he hoped, uh, and and he has no immediate. In the three, in the 300 foot is where? Show me on the map. Well, it's it's the it's the 300 feet running from 336. Okay. So that way, we already have access to 38 degrees, yes, and and that would provide access. That that would provide the property to our northeast access to both of those roads, and that was that was the that was what the contract. Was. And and if well, if, if tomorrow he called up and said, "I'm ready to, I've got a buyer for this property. We're going to develop it. Uh, you need to put that road in." We would be obligated to put it. And if they don't do it, the road, or the part of the road even, when the contractors are there, it is definitely more expensive to build the road to, to, build, to have people back out to do it, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we don't know what the price might be. Well, I, so, independent of the cost of material. Uh, I run some numbers. Uh, assuming we have a 12% increase in future and to remobilize contractors to contractors. All the other contracts and paying contracts is about one hundred sixty thousand. Additional above and beyond what it what the cost would be if you did it now. One more bit of information, Mr. Burns was sharing with me this morning. This is a the road is about a 45 day forty five day project. The three hundred foot section. Yes. Okay. So that gives you just an idea how long it, if um, the board chooses not to do it this time, it would take forty five days after approval to do it at least. 
What would what's the time frame on the entire road? Okay. So that'll give you an idea, just more information. For Mr. You. Burns, what's your recommendation? I don't really have a good one. It's a, there's no wrong answer. There's no. I mean, you know, That's why you recommend. We, we don't know what. We, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't Sorry, know what the price is going to be. The 18 hundred, months or 18 years. The 164, Mr. Burns, that you came up with. He, he was that was premised on assumption that concrete prices go up 12 percent. Right. Was that for the 300 feet or was that for the entire road? That's, what did you calculate? That was for the entire road. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, and and of course, you know, if we were asking this question in 2008 when we did the first we were projecting six percent more than that. That's more than that. Conservative. I mean, at, at that time, at that time, we were going one price or more. And that's out. and that's more the norm than what we've been seeing. Well, yeah, no <laughs> question. Uh, prices have definitely come down. Yeah, uh, they're, they're starting to come back up. Carrying costs that you did—that was an interest rate of three point three percent. Uh, that was the selling cost, the average selling cost of our last time. Any other questions? All right. We have a motion by Mr. Husbands and a second by Dr. Brown to approve the construction of the entire road at the cost of, of one million fifty six one fifty one. Million yes. All right. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor? All those opposed? All right, motion I believe carried. Uh, we have a question for clarification. Uh, so maybe, uh, <laughs> Who's gonna build the road? <laughs> the road builder. We want to scribe down the middle, Mr. Burns. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's it already. Since the board has approved the followers to do the project, do I need to bring the contract back in a window. Well, you, you have the, the. I hope we just approved this quote. Well, it's good. It's in here. Yes. I mean, does that mean I? Well, that's I fine it. with me. I mean, that's uh, that's uh, what I meant to do is to keep from y'all spending what, any more money on decision making on this project. <laughs> I, I mean, think you know, we just did it. <laughs> I don't know about the legality. I'll leave that up to you. Yeah, I'm I approved the number that's in here, and if that's that contract, then that's what I approved. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we're fine, Mr. Burns. Uh, Mr. Powell, you have anything to... Okay. Unless it goes wrong, then we'll talk to you about it. <laughs> <laughs> to your point, the contractor's proposal is being held good. Do you have the election for pleasure? They can up on it or not, by that vote. Let's strike price. Okay. So we just did. Just did. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Item number 6A. Level three grievance. This time we will turn it over to Ms. Galatis. I can start. Yes. The meeting of the Connor Independent School Street Board of Trustees is convened on January 15th, 2013. The following members of the board are present. Ms. Jessica Powell, Mr. Scott Kidd, Mr. John Husbands, Mr. Ray Sanders, Mr. Baytree Williams, Ms. C.J. Haynes, and Dr. Mel Brown. For the record of quorum is present. Your meeting for the purpose of hearing the appeal of the complaint of Betty T., the parent of a district student. The grievance involves a complaint against a district teacher. Therefore, under Texas Government Code Section 551074 and 551, Mr. Sanders. All is right, we are now back in open session. Is there a motion? A motion. Motion that we accept the uh, level okay. three. Uh, yeah, level two. Level three. Level, level two. 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 Finding. Finding. Second. Right. Three. We have a motion and a second to uphold the level two findings. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, signify by raising your hand. All opposed, signify like, like sign. All right. Uh, Ms. Taylor, you will be notified of the decision in writing. Thank you. 
At this time, the board will go back into closed session under 551071, consultation with board attorney, 551074, <coughs> deliberation regarding personnel, including superintendent contract, um, and 551072, <coughs> deliberation regarding real property. The time is now 743. Thank you. This Everything but the candy still here. No, I think they turned the heat off to save energy. The board is now in session. The time is 9:25. Next item on the agenda is consideration of. Employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, dismissal of a public officer, including superintendent evaluation, salary or contract. Is there a motion? <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. Yes, Mr. Sanders, I move that the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees amend the contract with Dr. Stockton as follows. Extend the contract for one additional year beyond the current term as set out in the contract. Advise the annual salary of the superintendent to be 305 effective January 1, 2013. Provide that the district shall make an annual annuity contribution in the amount of 17,000 for each contract year. Each year the contract is in effect and the board keeps the $1,500 monthly car allowance. Second. Oh, all right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Any other business? We have item. Uh, we didn't Seven take any action. Uh, we didn't take any action. Take any action. Oh, all right. Uh, I have something to read as president of the school board. Conroe ISD is most fortunate to have Dr. Stockton serve as our superintendent at a time when skilled leadership is essential in meeting the challenges of public education. Dr. Stockton has done a tremendous job in leading a fast growth district such as ours. He is also one of the most tenured superintendents for large districts in Texas and is an extremely dedicated leader and motivator for our district. Conroe ISD has 56 schools and more than 53,000 students and more than 6,000 employees and is rated as one of the top districts both within the state of Texas and the United States. CISD remains fiscally responsible and academically strong because of Dr. Stockton's influence, and we thank you very much for all you doing. I didn't know who was back there. I didn't see you. Um, may I make, right. a, may I make a statement, to please? Yes. I know it's been a long night. Um, we're spoiled, but I always say we're spoiled because we get out pretty early. Um, but thank you for staying, first of all. I appreciate all of you staying. Um, it's an honor to work for this board. It's an honor to work for the Conroe School District. And, and I will tell you, going into this year, there has been a little asterisk on this year for, for many years because it was a year that we have uh, four board members, four, potentially four positions change over, and that's a scary thing for the superintendent, it's a scary thing for a school district. And um, I just couldn't be more pleased with, with our board, um, with each of you and, and what you bring to the to the school district and, and the relationship that we have, and it's just an honor to work for you. It's an honor to work with, with the people out here, many of which I've known for, I don't know what the average um, years of relationship we've had, but it's a, it's a lot um, of years we've, we've known each other, and it's a great group. And uh, the pleasure, one of the pleasures of being in a district for a long period of time is everyone's here because of my choice, and that's not an egotistical statement, that's a statement of, the superintendent sets the organization, and I'm blessed to have incredible people in every position. And um, it, it's just a pleasure to work with people that I respect and, and I consider as friends. And um, so that's a that's a blessing in my life. Um, I pr probably should recognize my wife here, Hi, Kara. Yeah. All right. Appreciate you staying up. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. He came um, to see if you had a job yeah. when you left. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, and then, and the wonderful teachers we have, and, and they just do a great job. And 
it's just a pleasure to work in such a district that it's, it's a pleasure to have a job that you love to have, people that you love to work with, and, and feel good about something that you're doing. So um, in, in uh, respect to the time, I'll stop talking. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I look forward to the next uh, many years. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? And a, a second, second to adjourn. All in favor can leave. And all are opposed can stay. Thank you.